Hey everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this custom spruce root basket. But instead of this just being a generic tutorial video where I show you how to harvest the spruce roots and just a generic kind of uh, template for a basket, I thought I would come here to Glass Bren, someone that I have filmed plenty of times before on the channel. You may have seen our monthly agroecological permaculture market garden videos that we've been doing with Abel and Glass Bren. And I thought a perfect subject mm. for someone to give me some kind of creative custom challenge for a basket. I've got this one with me as a kind of example. I made this yesterday for my dad. Absolutely anything that you want. What would, what could I create for you? Well, I was thinking, um, so we're here in the tomatoes, in the tomato tunnel. There is a reason for this strange shot where we're kind of half squished together. <laughs> yeah, so we're just, they're just starting to ripen. So we're just starting to think about harvesting them. So I've always found that, I've never quite found the perfect thing to be carrying along with me while I'm walking down these rows, kind of picking tomatoes and putting them into. So really I need something really nice like this, lightweight. It's got slightly steeper sides so that it can contain the tomatoes, but really can just hold enough tomatoes, you know, for one run and then I'll, I'll decant those into a bigger a bigger crate, but um, just, just enough to hold in one hand and kind of... Um, okay, yeah. I like that. And then, so this is an example, this is a simple kind of trug, and this is a very simple weave where it's just going, you know, in and out and in and out and wrapping around. I'll show some pictures on screen now of a basket that I gave to Abel, which is also another video that I did, of a random weave type of harvesting basket. So they're kind of the two options, because at the moment, as I'm still learning, like hopefully, like with maybe yourselves, I don't know many intricate template designs for um, ways of weaving. So if it's okay, it will be either one of the two weaves. Yeah. Do you have a preference at all? I think for tomatoes, this kind of weave would be better. Yeah, tighter weave. A much tighter, yeah. 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 Brilliant, right then. Thank all you right. very much. I'll see you in uh, six months time yeah, when I've finally you. done it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when the tomatoes have been harvested, hopefully <laughs> before then. How to harvest spruce root. I have made a video about this, so this is just the basics. Find the root within the spruce forest, dig if you need to, carefully take it out, being sure to leave it how you found it, using your preferred method, strip the bark and hang it up to dry. Easy. Once you've collected all your spruce, first things first is to create the border. So as you can see here, I'm creating the kind of pencil thickness, the border, checking the size, getting annoyed by the midges that were getting worse as the night was going on. Yeah, that's me slowly losing my marbles. And then just wrapping it round and round and round and round and round. Again, going back and forward, making sure that it's the right length. And there we are, all finished. As you can see here, the spruce root was still really pliable because it had been soaked beforehand. So I molded it into the shape that I wanted using string and wood to secure it into place so that if I wanted to dry it and use it at a much later date, then it would stay in the shape that had been created here. Once you're ready to start weaving the main basket, you need to soak your spruce root. I find that either leaving it overnight should be good enough, or if you put it in some warm water, generally it's okay within about an hour or so. I'd also just leave it in that water while you continue to weave. Next up, it was time to get the border into the shape that I wanted, which was the kind of half moon shape so that it'll sit in the arm well. It was quite difficult. <laughs> Constantly kind of testing it and thinking how it's gonna be held and gonna be used when it's finally been made. You don't always have to do this method of tying it up first, but I found that it kind of, it acted as another pair of hands for me, holding it in place while I then did the next part. This was creating the bones of the structure, what you're then gonna weave through. So first of all, it's getting the shape that you wanted, making sure the length is right, getting it roughly in place, using a bodkin if you need to kind of tie it back in within itself. Then once you've done that, cut two other similar pieces to the same length and the same shape. Also, another thing to note is that what you're using now has to be thicker than what you're about to weave with. For this next section, I actually needed to go and watch a YouTube video myself from Big Green Art on how to weave a god's eye. 
I did an experiment with two different styles on just some scrap sticks that I had lying around just to see which one I preferred more. Then it was time to do it to the actual basket. The best way I could describe how to do a God's Eye is to secure your weaver on the back side of the left hand side of your cross. Then you come over the front and go diagonally to the top right. Then twist the entire thing 90 degrees. And then all you're doing is repeating that process. Behind the back of the left hand side of the cross, up and over diagonally to the right hand side and turn 90 degrees. Again, that's back behind the left hand side of the cross, up and over to the right, diagonally to the right hand side of the top, and then turn 90 degrees. And then you just keep doing that until you've reached the size that you prefer. Ideally, if you can, this is using just one piece of material because it's quite hard to join material up halfway through. But you also have to bear in mind the point of this cross is that the support structure is going to fit into it. So it needs to be at least an inch in size from the center of the eye to the outside edge. Now, the way that I did the back side of this, I kind of made it up on the spot and I really don't know how to describe it. So you're just gonna have to watch this piece of video. <laughs> Once you've done that, it's time to put the support structure in and then you're gonna start the main bulk of the weaving. Now for the main bulk of the weaving, which is also my most favorite part of any basket like this or any kind of simple trug because it's, it's quite monotonous and therefore quite therapeutic because you don't need to have your full attention on it. You can be listening to music or kind of just sitting and looking into the wilderness like I am here. And once you've got the rhythm of it, it's really easy to keep going. To do this weave, you tuck your weaver somewhere at the top. I've tucked it in here into the border and then you're going under, over, under, over. Once you get to the border again, you go, if, you're, if you've gone under beforehand, then you go over the border, wrap it round, and therefore you can start by going back over again because it will be opposite to what it was before on your support structure. So in essence, you're just going over, under, over, under, wrap it round, over, under, over, under, wrap it round. And that's it, really. So there's not really much for me to do here to tell you about how to do this, but seeing as it's a therapeutic part of the process, I thought I'd just leave it going for a little while. You can chill out to this music and maybe even escape like I did in the moment of just sitting there looking out into the wilderness.
Once you've got probably between a fifth and a third of the way through your basket, you will need to add more support structures because otherwise the gap between the support structures, the bones, whatever you want to call them, is going to be too wide. So that is totally dependent on the basket you're doing, on how many you may need to add at different times throughout that weaving process. To add a new one, you just cut a new piece to the size that you need and inevitably you will have created a hole for that to go in where the rest of the support structure is. So you can just start from there, tuck it in, and then just start weaving over and under, over and under, and you've obviously added that support structure into that process. As you continue, you may need to use either like a wrapping iron, basically a, a heavy object to kind of knock down the weave and tighten it back in again. I personally don't own one of those yet, so I just used my hands and just kind of gripped it and pushed it down to try and keep that weave tight. Also, I was always trying to keep the weave tight while I'm going wrapping around under, over, under, over. Once you run out of one of your weavers, you just need to basically continue the same process that you were doing. Sometimes I tuck it in or wrap it round, but I think the kind of neatest way to do that is you just continue the weave, basically. And therefore, you're either you're starting from the support structure beforehand or one after. Again, it's totally up to you. You'll see through just repetition and practice what works best for you, depending on the shape of the basket. An additional creative extra that I did on this specific basket was to weave some of the weavers around your border, but within some of it. As you can see here, I've gone over a few of them, so say three, but then under one. So it looks like the, the, the support structure within the border kind of comes out and in within the weave of the basket hopefully to give that feeling that it sort of organically did that or to be honest it kind of emphasizes how the spruce root is kind of gnarly and yeah just gives it a really good effect that, that i really like the process is exactly the same you're just choosing where you want the piece of border to come out and just making sure that you've still got strength in the weave by going over the rest of the border and not leaving it with just one small piece which is holding the whole basket together. Inevitably you'll reach a point where you can't put any more in and once you've reached that point you're done. Close your eyes. Time for the big reveal. So I'm back here at Glassbren. Abel's not asleep. He's just got his eyes shut because I've told him to have his eyes shut, ready for the reveal of the basket. And here we go. Hands out. Whoa! Dude! That's so cool. That's, that's it. That's the, that's the front. That's so cool. So it ended up tighter than I thought and I think that's as I'm learning about how much to stress and how, how hard to pull on things I think that's what was happening that I was still pulling it a little tight and that brought it in a little bit that's amazing very on brief I like it <laughs> it's got to keep chucking it around okay so now for some pictures and pretty b-roll of Abel using it So we couldn't actually film any harvesting shots of Abel that day because the tomatoes weren't ready. I went back a month later and the volunteers had done such an amazing job of clearing the tomatoes that actually cleared the whole lot the day we were there. So here's just some nice footage of the basket sat on a bench. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz, but also, if you're interested in getting a custom basket made and you want me to make something for you, give me a shout in the comments below. Cheers!